You know, finding a purpose is, uh, it shouldn't be rushed, first of all. A lot of people are rushing, you know, hurry, hurry, I gotta get a purpose, I gotta get a purpose. And if they do settle on something, it's usually not meaningful, and it's not real, and it's not really their purpose. Our purpose is what we love to do. And too many people, they think, they love to do something, but how could I couldn't earn any money at it? I give you a good example. I was talking to a doctor in Phoenix, and he was telling me he was thinking of leaving the profession. He was going to quit, and I said, "Why are you going to quit?" Well, he said, "You just can't earn. You can't earn the money at it." He said, "We're putting in more time to earn less money." He said, "The the medical profession's in a bit of a, you know, a mess." And I said, "Well, why did you become a doctor?" Well, he said, "I love it." Well, I said, why would you want to quit it? You see, I think he, he got the idea that you got to earn money at it. You don't have to earn money. Let's set the money aside for a moment, and that's another subject. How do you select a purpose? You find out what you love to do, and then you dedicate your life to it. Now, I'm very fortunate because I can earn a lot of money living my purpose because my purpose is in a very profit-oriented type of service. Not everybody is. The doctor couldn't do that. But I said, you know, if you wake up every morning and you love what you're going to do, you're a rich person. And I said, you can earn money at something else. I said, your purpose is spending your days doing what you love to do. That way you get satisfaction from how you spend your days. And we should get a lot of satisfaction from how we spend our days. And I said, you can set up multiple sources of income. You don't earn money from working. Working is the worst way to earn money. In fact, Hill put it very well, Napoleon Hill. He said, if you're one of those people who believe that hard work and honesty alone will bring riches, perish the thought is not true. He said, riches when they come in huge quantities are never the result of hard work. Riches come if they come at all in response to definite demands based upon the application of definite principles and not by chance or luck. So it's a matter of providing service. I was providing service last night when I was sleeping. Therefore, I was earning money last night when I was sleeping. Now, if you really pay attention to what you're doing and start to understand the laws governing compensation and growth, um, you can earn as much money while you're sleeping as you'd ever spend when you're awake. In fact, you can earn more when you're sleeping than you could spend when you're awake. So, the doctor misunderstood. He thought the purpose, you had to earn money, and you don't. The purpose is something you really love to do. So I think a person would learn how to do it if they will, um, um, if they'll take the time every day for a while. Um, they may have a little pad and um, like a little journal or something and a pen and put it near their favorite chair. And every morning they're going to get up and they're going to think about creating their purpose. And they ask themselves, what do I really love doing? And they start jotting down the things they love to do. And then, how would I like to do that all day, every day? How would I like to spend my life doing that? Well, you're going to hit on something, and that's what your purpose is. Like, my purpose is to live and work in a prosperous environment that encourages productivity and pleasure so that I can improve the service I render to my family, my company, my community, my country, and ultimately the world. That's my purpose. And that's what I do every day, all day. And I love it. So you see, every day, I have a good day because I'm on purpose. When I get out of bed, I know why I'm getting out of bed. Your purpose is why you get out of bed, why you go to work, you know? And um, I was fortunate enough to figure out what I love doing. I was at a meeting with Earl Nightingale one time. I went to Chicago. I was fortunate enough to get an hour with him. This was way back in the early 60s. And um, I phoned, I got an appointment, and, and that was very, <laughs> it was quite a, an accomplishment itself. He was the most listened to man in the history of the broadcasting industry of that time. Now, Earl was, um, 
he and Lloyd Cohn and his partner really started the personal development industry as we know it today in recorded fashion at the Nightingale Conant Corporation. And anyway, I was with him for about an hour. It was really a ex rich experience. I observed how his office was set up. He had a book holder on his desk, a holder that held a book open. I have a book holder on my desk and that's why. And I asked him, you know, I said, why do you have that book on me? He says, I studied that one page for a long time. I want to get it into my mind. I want to learn to think that way. And so I picked that up from him. But when I was leaving, I said, Earl, what's the big deal in life? Like, what's the real secret of life? Well, he says, there's no secret to it. He said that the, the trick of life is to discover what you love to do and then make a decision that you're going to dedicate your life to it. He said, the problem with most people is they never decide what they love to do. I'm going to tell you, I got so jazzed right at that moment because I knew exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted to do what he was doing and I wanted to do it with him. And you know something? Well, three years later, I was his vice president of sales. I had an office right near his. I was prepared to pay them to let me work there. And I was there for five years. It was such a rich, rewarding experience. It, and it shaped the direction of my whole life but I followed my heart. I left a business, I was earning a lot of money. I took a job, very small income, but I was prepared to pay them, let me work there. The money will come in providing service, but you gotta be on purpose if you wanna live a fulfilled life. Now he taught me that, I learned it sitting there, and I've been doing it ever since.